What's up everyone and welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of Snowpiercer. This is the first episode of the first season which is called First the Weather Changed. Uh, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next, and uh, comment below on any video that you watch on my channel. So Snowpiercer is a very interesting IP property. It's a, it's a comic series or graphic novel that was written by uh, Benjamin Legrand, Jeca Loeb, Jean-Marc Roche, called Le Transparent de Siege. And it's a basically a story about classism, about class struggle, about what the rich get and what the poor get. And it's also about revolution. It's about these group of people who live in the thing called the tail section. And uh, it's a very interesting story because it takes place on a train, a very long train. And each cab of this train has different unique ecosystems. And it also takes place during a ice age of sorts because the whole government with the way of weather and so on and so forth, they decided they were going to try and fix the system. It's kind of like what they did in the matrix where they basically torched the skies and we created an ice age. I've never read the graphic novel, but I've seen the Bong Joon Ho, you know, movie, which had Tilda Swinton, Chris Evans and Ed Harris in it. And it was just a really fascinating look into a type of culture that we're still dealing with today you know the rich are getting super rich they have you know all their necessities all their excess electricities and stuff like that and then the poor have to deal with like the cleanup they have to you know deal with the fact that they have no money or no food they're being basically controlled by you know the upper class society and they're going to do what they need to do to revolt and that's a it's a interesting story to tell and you're doing it on a very compact type of style of filmmaking or storytelling where you're doing it on train cars and stuff like that and so it makes sense after seeing how good the Bong Joon Ho movie was to maybe do a TV series of it I didn't expect it to be on TNT I expected it to be on like FX or HBO or Showtime or something like that but with that said, in the way TV and its landscape is working now, you know, you can have these mature type styles of TV on stuff like TNT and it, it'll work. I mean, this TV series is incredibly graphic from its first episode and what it's trying to do. And so we have Graham Manson, who is known for writing stuff like Cube, as well as being one of the creators of Orphan Black. And he is basically reworked this whole story of these, you know, classist systems on this train during the Ice Age. And I like what this story is setting up. I like the idea of we have a character who's played by B. Diggs, who plays Andre Layton, and he is basically thrown into this revolution style leadership role where he's going to basically take control of the of Snowpiercer, the train itself. But he gets thrust into basically becoming a homicide detective, which is really fascinating because that's not what he is. He's a he's a guy that is a thinker. He's a he has the ability to base, basically create revolutions, and we get to see early on the ver, very first inklings of what Snowpiercer is, what the society and the world has become. You know, we get this really cool opening animated sequence where it shows like what the government did, how these people are trying to survive the young Snowpiercer, the basic, you know, tear down of what society can do when they're put it, you know, in these insane insane odds of you know survival and it's really sad it's really depressing you know families get like torn apart from one another there's two characters in the tail class that actually get separated from their other family members and you see the other family members the husband and the other kid basically gonna die in this you know insane ice age and so on and so forth and so we you know shoot forward six years later and that's where we get characters, like I said, like W. Diggs. We get characters like Allison Wright and Stephen Ogg, who was in Grand Theft Auto V. And we see that they are on the cusp of doing this revolution because of what W. Diggs is doing. He's going to set up a way for them to take down you know, all these you know, security forces and stuff like that. And that's when W. Diggs is pulled away to the, what is called, I think, fourth class or third class or whatever you want to call it, to investigate a murder, which is very tnt esque in its style of telling like tv making and stuff like that so this really does feel like a, t a, a tnt show but i think what really does work in this first episode is the acting alone david diggs who's known for stuff like hamilton and blind spotting has really come into his own as a an actor who can give a very understated very realistic approach to a performance 
and he's doing that here he is the guy that has to have the full brontal of the tail section on his back as well as you know the idea of you know what he's gonna have to do for you know the Jennifer Connelly character who plays Melanie Cavill who's the voice of the Snowpiercer and I like that about them I think this is a character that if developed well and done really well which is what Graham Mason and his you know writing staff are known for doing is creating really in-depth well-written characters and as long as they don't get into the stupid tropes of you know we're gonna, we're gonna have him do this this and this and it's gonna be so played out that it's gonna be by the end of the season it's like what is even the point of the series i think it could work really well and then on the other aspect we have a character played like i said by jennifer Connolly, who lives in first class she has to deal with the first class struggles and stuff like that and she is a very headstrong woman she is a woman that has to basically control the whole situation. She brings the V Diggs character into the mix. She's a woman that actually holds the dangle of the string, the piece of cheese in front of Daveed. It's like, you do this, you solve this murder, you could be moving up in a class system. And I like that, and I like the idea of what she's doing. I, you know, Jennifer Connelly is one of my favorite actresses, so she's doing good work here, at least I think so. But the thing I like most of all outside of the acting you know we have uh people like happy anderson who's basically taking care of the morgue or it's like not really a morgue but it's a cryo thing where they put people who have done bad things to sleep um i like susan park who is basically playing the top tier chef so you see her swimming in the water that's really really cool about this series is like it has different cars and like there's a, a like a small ocean in one of the cars and stuff like that uh mickey mickey sumner who is playing best hill she's like looks like she's going to be one of those cops that kind of forms a relationship with the David Diggs character, not in a romantic sense of words, but kind of like what Bones did in essence up to a point. And I like that. But the, like I said, the structure of this train, the seeing the poverty and seeing like the middle class and seeing the rich and seeing all in between with like, they go into a kind of greenhouse where there's, you know, fruit being made and, you know, stuff's being harvested. And then there's like this sex train of some sort where these like really weird people are doing crazy things. It's, it's a really weird scenario of a story. But I like the fact that even though the train's compact, there are a thousand cars on this train and you can see that like they have to find a way to survive so when you get to the tail section they're all cramped together and when you get to the first class section it's more open more spread out there's more elegant more unique more special and that is a, a fascinating way, way to look at the story and i really enjoy that about what's going on here it does fall into tropes you know like the murder mystery and stuff like that I don't think that's going to be something that plays out, at least I hope through the whole episode, but I think, unfortunately, the reveals of the murder suspect are probably going to get a little too ham-fisted, a little too hammy. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? And the other thing I kind of worry about is, like with Lost, which, thank God, as me personally, I enjoyed what they did with Lost. I thought it was fine. A lot of people didn't. When you set a movie or a story that has going to have multiple parts, multiple episodes, and you put it in a very enclosed closure of a space like a train, how much can you really do with that material? That's why Bong Joon-ho's story, his movie, the condensed nature of the couple hours that it played out, worked so well because you can get your story you can get your ideas and your set pieces and your what you're going for in the, the the story and you can play it out and you're not spending too much time here but this season's like eight or nine maybe ten episodes i can't remember offhand and if it were like a limited series i could understand that kind of like uh with um what uh watchmen and stuff like that but this is going to be a full-fledged tv series so it's going to be really fascinating to see what uh, graham mason and his writing staff do um, I'm really interested to see uh, how they're going to handle just the enclosed space. You know, are they eventually going to go outside, even though it's like minus 100 and some degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit or whatever it is? It's going to be really fascinating to see. The idea that there is the conflict of what this train who is constantly running, like I said, it's been running for seven years. It's going to be really fascinating to see if it hits like points where there are people alive outside that's gonna be a really interesting concept if they go there if not you know how are they gonna juggle the juggling act of the story past the first season because you know you can do 
first season, but where do you go from there? So I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. I really like it. There are very some very fun moments. There are some really sad moments when, you know, Stephen Ogg and his crew, uh, they're in the tail section. They do do the revolution. Very, very violent. You know, they're tired of being held back. It's like, you know, watching Parasite or, you know, the movie Snowpiercer or any of that nature where the poor the people that have nothing they're eventually going to rise up i mean you look at certain scenarios in society today people are going to rise up and that's what i kind of enjoy about what they're at least doing in this first episode and you know when you see david Diggs just eating a grilled cheese and tomato soup which is you know a staple i mean it's not anything special but when you've had that taken away from you when you see that kind of stuff in certain you know situations and people it's it's a really kind of fascinating thing to see and to see one of the tail people and he was an older guy it was his birthday he wanted like an hour alone to listen to music and he ends up hanging himself really sad really heartbreaking to watch but really kind of shows you the telltale signs of what is going on here in this this movie show whatever you want to call it and uh yeah snowpiercer for the first episode i would uh if i would rank it i give a eight and a half out of ten um it has issues with like this visual effects um i don't think it has it i don't think it has its look and aesthetic and feel down 100 percent. i mean the visual effects are really awful in this i mean but that's low budget filmmaking for tv series and stuff like that but once the series kind of gets its groove once it starts its you know what it is and what it needs to be a pilot is usually not representative of that but once it gets its look and feel i think this show could be something special and i think it could be something unique so for right now it's definitely a great starting point for something that you know you could be a little worried about because of how good the bong joon ho uh, story the movie was um james hawes who is a, a director has done a lot of stuff like black mirror and stuff like that um i think he uh I think he did a nice job for the first episode. I think this is definitely a worthy take for as well for Graham Mason, like I said, who did uh, Orphan Black. So, but that's it. Um, that's my take on the first episode of Snowpiercer, the TV series. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of the first episode. What did you think of the movie of Bong Joon Ho's uh, movie? Uh, what's your overall thoughts on where you think this TV series could go? Do you think it's going to be good? Do you think it's going to be bad? Are you a little worried? Like I, I am a little bit, but like I said. They know what they're doing. I don't. So, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. Comment below on any video that you're watching my channel, as well as liking or disliking this video, as well as any video on my channel. But otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.